What is going on, everyone? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and I thought this week I would talk about some big Spider-Man sales that happened on the weekly Heritage Comic Auction. Spider-Man always has a ton of big keys that sell in this weekly auction, and I've had some feedback in some recent videos where uh, people wanted me to talk about a wider range of prices for books. Uh, you know, because a lot of times if you're, talk if you're talking about the top sales, it's just going to be 10, 20, you know, $5,000 books, and that's not in everybody's budget. So there was a request to talk about some of the, the other keys that come up in these auctions as well. And so to do that, I thought in this video, I would focus on Spider-Man. Now, there obviously was a very big Spider-Man book that sold this week. There was a 9 0 a uh, restored copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 that you can see here went for $33,600. But we'll talk about that one at the end. You know, we'll, we'll go to some of the bigger books near the end as well, but we'll talk about a wide variety of keys across the, call it the copper to, to modern, bronze, and then into the silver age. But the page that I've got shown here, uh, this is the recap of the weekly Heritage Comic Auction. You can see that this week's auction was actually on the smaller side. Uh, you've got the total auction sales numbers over here, 499,911. Typically, I see this number ranging between 500,000 and 700,000, so 499 definitely on the lower end. There's not really anything you can draw from that other than there just probably weren't as many big books in the auction this week. But let's get into these books. So we're going to start with one of the most infamous books of the last couple of years, and that was... Amazing Spider-Man number 101, the first appearance of Morbius. We had a 5.5 creamed off-white pages copy that sold for $216. I mean, let's take a, a closer look at this book. I mean, it's a pretty decent looking 5.5. You've got a little bit of spine wear there. You've got some creasing on this, this right edge uh, down in the corner. But overall, I mean, a solid enough looking copy of the first appearance of Morbius, that amazing Spider-Man number 101. Now let's take a look at how this book did, because this book has corrected, I mean, probably almost the most out of just about any book out there from the comic boom. So we've got a lot of red arrows here, you know, telling you that this book is still on average trending down. And I mean, look at this, like prior to the comic boom, this was, I'm sure this spike here in the chart is where they had the announcement that they were gonna do the Morbius movie. Then it was pretty flat for a while. Then it started to climb up all the excitement and anticipation. Then you had the comic boom and, you know, all these big prices up here where this book in a 5.5 peaked at $750 in 2021. Now we've got this downtrend that's just been going for a long time, a couple of years. And the low actually we've had in the last couple of years, 181 in 2023, 195 this year. We've already had 14 sales this year. You can see this book generally going around 250 to $260. This sale was definitely on the lower end. You know, $216 sales definitely on the lower end, probably around 14%, 15% below what I would have likely expected this book to go for. Not a huge surprise for the book, but definitely a little bit lower sale for it. But I know Mickey was talking about in one of his recent videos about if the books are still above their prices from you know prior to the comic boom. Now this one's tough uh, because you had this big spike before the comic boom because of the announcement with the movie. And so if you you kind of have to maybe go before that spike. And this book was going for about 120 bucks. You know, I mean, look at that. Like I mean, even in 2016, high sale 96. And so we're still well above those numbers. Um, but it's also a Spider-Man key. I would kind of expect it to generally slightly trend up over time. Is this book a, a deal at this point? I I don't know. I mean, this downtrend still seems like it's going. I, I think there's still some uh, some bad taste in people's mouths for for Morbius. So I would probably still avoid this book for now. But the downside risk feels relatively low. If you wanted to go pick up a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 101, it's not. I don't think it's going to hurt you too bad. All right, let's go to the next one. A little bit more expensive here. I mean, it's always going to be an expensive book. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 129, first appearance of the Punisher. Uh, so this is an 8.5 white pages copy, went for $2,280. Let's check out Amazing Spider-Man number 129 and see 
how this book performed. So an 8.5, you know, white pages, white pages will often give you a little bit of a bump too. But if we go down and take a look at an 8.5 and we see where this book has been selling, I mean, we've got this year as low as 1,977. Here's that sale, uh, 2,280. So this is definitely, I mean, it's not the highest sale lately. Uh, there was a $2,600 sale earlier in May. But overall, if I looked at the, the prices for this book for the last couple months, probably would have priced this book around $2,200. So it went for $2,280 right in line with what I would have expected it to go for. But how is this book doing long term? Can this book still drop? I mean, you can see here that it's been pretty stable for the last year or so, but it's still well above these prices that it was at prior to the, the spike from the comic boom. And you go back to 2019 and 8.5. I mean, look at this, like 1100, 1200 bucks. It's still almost double that. So I would still be pretty cautious about picking up Amazing Spider-Man 129. I think that the downside risk is definitely still there for this book. Me personally, I mean, there's always, a, if you get a great deal, I mean, that's one thing, but I don't think anybody's selling you an ASM 129 for 1200 bucks and an 8.5. So I would be pretty careful about this book. I would not be buying it right now. All right, next one. I actually just picked up a new stand 98 of this book. So just for full awareness, you know, since I'm talking about <laughs> talking about this book, uh, so this one for 1,020 for a direct. I haven't looked at the prices for these ahead of time. That feels like a strong sale, but let's take a look. You know, maybe I maybe I'm off on that one. I just know that a lot of the other black suit Spider-Man keys have come down quite a bit. Like Secret Wars 8 is like a 400 450 dollar book in a 98. I mean, really has corrected quite a bit. This book, I feel like this is the more desired book for black suit Spider-Man. But I still remember getting this book prior to the comic boom in a 9-8 newsstand for like, I think it was like 600 bucks or maybe 800. And so it's still a, the prices are definitely elevated. I mean, look at this. You got a lot of red arrows on this book. But we're going to take a look at a 9-8. And wow, actually 1300 for the last sale, but the low was 900 big range for this book this year. Let's make sure that this $1,920 sale wasn't a newsstand. It wasn't. Wow, in April, that I mean, there was a 9.8 for $1,920. That's a really big outlier. I mean, that just feels like maybe somebody didn't know exactly what they were bidding on. <laughs> they Maybe they had looked at newsstand prices and they bid on the directs accordingly. It's tough to have two people to do that. But I mean, I don't see that as something like shill bidding. I mean, look at all the sales that happened for this book. That's not really changing anything. I mean, you had 1,200, 1,100, 1,200, 1,200. This didn't impact anybody's pay, what they're paying for this book. But I mean, look at this 1,020 sale. It wasn't the low. I mean, we had a 977 pretty soon after. But looking at the last couple months for this book, I probably would have been around 1,200, maybe 1,250, but probably about 1,200. So 1,020 on the lower side for what I would have expected this book to go for. $180 below, so about 15% below what I would estimate it at. Now, looking at the, the prices for this one, I think this book is still dropping. <laughs> I mean, I definitely think that this downward trend doesn't look like it's stopped yet. And when you look at the pre-comic boom prices, and someone someone mentioned that to me in a comment where they they were surprised or they thought I was, there's no way that I would tell people that it's risky to buy a book that I have for sale. I mean, like I said, that, that new stand I bought, I'm going to be putting it up for sale. And right now I'm selling you here, like, I wouldn't be buying Amazing Spider-Man 252. I feel like I got a good price on it, so that's why I picked it up. But I think the downside risk is definitely still there for this book. I mean, look at this, like pre-comic boom prices. This was a 400-ish dollar book, 375, 385, some, something like that. And it's still selling for triple that. <laughs> I mean, two and a half to three times that price. So I just think that when I see that, yeah, maybe it doesn't keep dropping, but I feel like the downside risk is very very high for for this book. It's not like there's a small number of them. 
I, I mean, let's take a look at the census for this book. I, I, I don't know how many nine eights there are. 1,751. Now that includes directs and newsstands. So, you know, take that into consideration, but 1,751, 899s, 4,271 96s. I mean, 21,000 graded copies. There's no shortage of Amazing Spider Man number 252. So just be cautious out there as well with this book. All right, moving on to the next one Amazing Spider Man 300 in a 7.5 newsstand. So like I said, I, I was trying to, to make sure I covered some books with a wide range of prices because this really is one of the most desired Spider-Man books that's out there. Uh, I think I think it's the most graded book. If I remember correctly, for the CGC census, it is the most graded book. But let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man 300. And when you're talking about a 7.5, I don't imagine that there's much difference in price between the direct and the newsstand, but this is a newsstand. It's got the barcode on the bottom. I went for $228. So let's take a look at the 7.5 newsstand. Here's 228. Direct had 261. Um, it's for the last sale, but let's take a look at what a direct was going for. I mean, it looks like generally somewhere around. 350 bucks, 320 to 350 for a direct. And if we go to a newsstand, they aren't going to sell quite as often. But the newsstand, I mean, you can see here, like actually a little higher. I'd say the average is about 375. So definitely people paying a premium. So this feels like this was a pretty good pickup. I, I mean, $228 for a 7.5 when generally they've been going around 375. That feels like a pretty good buy. Uh, now let's take a look at the the risk there. And so prior to the comic boom, only two sales, but two seventy five. They're still below that. I, I think this was a really good buy. I, I think that uh, that this was a very very safe purchase. Uh, I don't think there's really any risk at all. And I, I think whoever picked this up should be very happy uh, with that buy. I mean, below twenty nineteen prices. Let's take a look at that again, or 2018, like below 2018 prices, a little above 2017 prices, and well below what this book is regularly going for out there right now. So good pick up for that one. All right, now the next book. We had first appearance of Venom. Now we have the first appearance of Carnage, another one of those books that went crazy during the comic boom and just fell off a cliff. So we've got a 9.8. This is the direct edition, no barcode down there. So let's jump over to GPA again, and we'll look at a, a 361. This is one of those books, always wanted it when I was a kid, couldn't afford it when I was a kid. I had a second appearance and a third appearance, but I never got that, that first appearance. But the 9.8, last sale, 350. That feels high. <laughs> feels really high uh, based on where I feel like this book had dropped. But yeah, so you look at this and it's probably, I don't know what's going on with that $800 sale. Maybe that was a new stand that didn't get captured correctly or something, but generally about, I mean, kind of all over the place, but 300, I'd say the average is probably around 300. And so this one went for 240. Uh, it's a white page copy too, if that matters to you. I mean, I feel like pretty good buy. I mean, it seems like about a $300 book, got it for $240. Uh, when we look at the prices prior to the, the comic boom, I mean, 2020 never had a price below uh, at $240. Every, you know, that's below all of those. 2019, the low was $170, but still, like, looking at these prices, this is kind of, they must have been, this must have been when they had announced Venom at some point or, or uh, Carnage at some point, because this is like a $400 book all day in here. And so definitely, uh, I mean, look at this, like 2018, still not below that, like low sale, 246, and this was 240. So, I mean, Carnage is a really popular character. You can see this has corrected below the average leading up to it. It's hard to say what exactly that's from. Is it because the movie wasn't received well and you get these over corrections as a result of it? Is it because we had these, this big spike in prices and so we probably had a big jump in volume of graded copies? So maybe there's a lot more nine eights out there now than there used to be. And it's just overwhelmed demand. I mean, look at this 6,124 nine eights. 
I mean, out of 27,000 graded copies, <laughs> there are a ton of them. So there are a ton of these books out there. Maybe that's part of it, but I still feel like this was a, a pretty good pickup. Uh, $240 for a, you know, for a nine, eight went, I mean, when I was thinking that this was probably about a $300 book and in some cases people paid 350. So 20% below my estimate for this book, I think it was a good pickup and very low risk. All right, now we're gonna move on to some Silver Age books. So the first one here was an Amazing Spider-Man number 20, the first appearance of the Scorpion, 5-0, $480. This was one of those books that there's been a lot of speculation that we're gonna see this character because we saw Matt Gargan in like the first uh, Homecoming movie. He, he was one of the, the characters in there. And so I think everybody was speculating that we were gonna get the Scorpion and it just it hasn't ever, ever materialized. I don't know if it ever will, but let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man number 20. So jump all the way back, you know, super early, obviously, like very early Spider-Man. Uh, so 1965, Amazing Spider-Man number 20, and we had this in a 5.0 for $480. So we get on to a 5.0 and we look at the pricing for this book. And this is the low for the year. I mean, it's, it ties. So it ties for the low for the year, but we've had a 504, 510, not anything really shocking. The 700 is on the, the higher side. Um, but let's take a look at, I mean, looking at this, I probably would have said 500 bucks. You know, I'd say it'd be about a $500 book Went for 480. I mean, within 4%, we have a four, five going for 444, a five, five going for 587. I mean, it really feels like about a $500 book here. And if we look at the prices prior to the comic boom, I mean, as high as 580, as low as 200, but generally looks like this book was going around 450 bucks. And so today going 480, I mean, after five years, I, you, you would think a little bit of upward motion for this book. I mean, even if you take away like this little spike around here, you kind of look at that general upward motion for this book. I feel like this is probably a $550 book today or, or could be that. Uh, and so right now it feels undervalued. Like I feel like Amazing Spider-Man 20 has overcorrected at this point. So it feels a little undervalued to me. And, you know, again, not a bad pickup under what I would value it at today and undervalued overall. All right, the next one. Another pretty big Silver Age Spider-Man key. Amazing Spider-Man 50, first appearance of the Kingpin. 4.0 went for $552. I mean, if you had been watching Swaggle Haas live sale, he had a raw, I think 4.0 that he sold for like $375. So you could have gotten a great deal, you know, and maybe, maybe it gets a 4.5 or 5 or, or something like that. I think I remember him saying it was a pretty nice book. So somebody got, you know, a great deal on that because we had a 4.0 right here, went for $552. So let's check out Amazing Spider-Man number 50 in a 4.0 see how that sale did. I mean, this is this was one of the first books I bought when I got back into collecting about five years ago. I had never had this one before, and it's such an amazing cover. It caught my attention. So we got that 4.0 right here. It's the last sale, $552. Low for the year, 440, so we're definitely above that. Last sale before that, 600, 599, 600. I probably would have valued this book somewhere around... 575. I mean, there were some lower sales here, then it started picking up again. I mean, maybe even as high as 600, but I'd say like 575 to 600. So it went for 552, about five to 10% on the higher side below what I would estimate this book would go for. You can see this one has been pretty stable for a while, over a year, just kind of been bumping up and down on this little flat line here. However, and this is the thing that always just makes me a little bit nervous is that prior to the comic boom, this sale is well above 2019 prices. It's even above 2020 prices. I mean, in 2019, this book was 300 to 350 bucks. 2020, this book was, you know, started off the year around the same, three to 350, and then you start getting the boom here at the end, and it was getting up around 500. So that makes me nervous. I mean, it is a big key. It's a very in-demand book but it's the fact that this is still like, even if I extend out this trend line, it's still above that. So 
for me, Amazing Spider-Man 50 at this type of price point probably wouldn't be picking it up. Um, I just I feel like the the downside risk is still there and I would be cautious with it. I mean, we had a you can see a, a three five just a half grade lower going one hundred and seventy dollars less than that. So I think that there is the risk that this book could drop more and I'd be pretty cautious with it. All right. So now for the next book, we're getting just to, to bigger and bigger Silver Age keys. We've got an amazing Spider-Man number 14. First appearance of Green Goblin in a 5.5. Pretty nice grade for this book. Good looking copy. Went for $2,280. So let's jump to Amazing Spider-Man number 14 in a 5.5 for $2,280. So go down to the 5.5 here. There's that last sale. Wow, look at that. Look at that price difference. I got to check out that. That's a big sale. $4,275. That feels weird. <laughs> I'll say that. I'll say that feels weird. But this one went for 2280 This is the low for the year. Uh, let's see if there were any other sales at that price this year. No. So this was the low for the year. And from a month ago, about $700 less than that sale a month ago. And this one, again, this is what I'm talking about. You know, 2020, this book was going around $1,800. Bucks. Uh, 2019, this book was going around... 1700 to 1800 and so it's above those prices it always just makes me just a touch nervous you know when it's above those prices still it makes me a little nervous it is a very popular book the downside risk is probably relatively small i mean if it was going for 1800 and this is at 2280 i mean if it went all the way back to those prices you've got another 15 to 20 percent that it could drop but this price <laughs> That's 4275 What is that? Look at that. that I mean, that's that's definitely out of line. Where did that sale happen? All right, we're gonna we're gonna find that one. Let's see. We should still be able to see it if it was eBay. So we're gonna go to eBay and we're gonna look for that sale. Uh, we will look for amazing Spider-Man number 14, CGC 6.0, 1964. And so then we're going to look for sold listings. So we got sold listings here. So here's this one. Yeah, there it is. 4,500 bucks. Let's see. What was that? It went for 4,000. Like somebody took a best offer. Yeah, <laughs> I would do at that. Uh, cool cards and collectibles. I mean, 100% feedback, a bunch of sales. And I'm guessing it's real. Um, yeah. <laughs> Somebody paid, I mean, is it white page? And it's not white pages, creamed off white pages. I mean, hopefully you can afford to lose that money because you paid more than a seven. I mean, yeah, that, that was, that was not a good pickup um, by any stretch. Uh, it could be quite like, I mean, you look at this book, it's still kind of like on that downward trend here in this grade, still above those prices here. And then to pay almost 4,300 bucks. Yeah, uh, not a great pickup, in my opinion, a very high price that was paid for that book. Um, but, you know, hopefully they can afford to lose that money. All right. So that was Amazing Spider-Man number 14, First Appearance of Green Goblin. Now we're getting into the, the last couple, a couple really big books. Got an Amazing Spider-Man number one, had a 4.5 that went for $9,300 off white to white pages. Let's take a look at uh, at this one. Because uh, it's got some, it's got definitely got that marble chipping on the side. Now, this is a book that, because of the light color of the cover, it never really shows up that bad. Like, it actually still looks relatively decent, even with that chipping. Got some chipping on the side there. You got a little chip out of the top here. But overall, solid looking book. You know, solid looking 4.5, good colors. So let's take a look at Amazing Spider Man number one a 4.5 because there was also a 0.5 that sold and the 0.5 had a I felt had a pretty strong sale so here's that $9,300 sale and only two sales this year but there was an 8,000 and 9,300 so a little up from that one and this was a book that 2019 going for I mean around like 9,500 to 10,000 in that range I mean this this is a book that feels like there's very little risk. Like that $8,000 pickup seems like a pretty great buy. I mean, you got to go all the way back to 2017 
So I'd say that eight thousand dollar pickups looks like it was a really good uh, good purchase. Even ninety three hundred feels really safe for what this book seems like it's worth. I mean, we had a four zero in March go for ten thousand seven hundred. We have this five zero for eleven thousand four hundred five five for thirteen nine. I mean, yeah, you've got some down arrows here still. I mean, but it does feel like the downside risk on this book is pretty low at these grades. Now you do have to check that on each grade. Some, some grades haven't, you know, either they don't sell as often or they just don't correct quite the same. And so you got to watch for that with each one. But in this grade, it feels like a pretty safe buy. I mean, look at that. It's like right in line with where this book was going back to like 2018. All right. I just wanted to talk about the 0.5 before we go to the Amazing Fantasy 15, because this 0.5 sold for 3,240. I think it's a complete 0.5 though. So that's a plus. Yeah. So it just says tape on cover. So if it doesn't have something like it's missing a page on the notes here, it means it is complete. So it is a complete copy. Uh, let's take a look at the back cover. Back cover looks actually pretty good. A, a piece out of the bottom down here, but it's a complete copy. You know, the covers tape back together and, and all of that, but it's a 0.5 complete, which does count for something. Uh, so Let's take a look at that, that 0.5. So here's that 3,240. And here you can see that, yeah, we had a, a big sale. I, that was actually my sale. <laughs> I sold my 0.5 for 7,000 in 2022. Uh, so that was me selling mine at the, at the I caught the top on that one. Um, but you go back to 2020, and this is right back in line. Uh, we go to 2019, and it is lower. You know, I mean, like 2100, probably about the average there. Um, so it's up, but this is four years later for Amazing Spider Man 1. I mean, Amazing Spider Man 1, you look at the long term trends of this book, this book does trend up. I mean, this is, you want those, those big hero keys. I mean, just look at that kind of that general trend. And this feels right around where this book should be. I think that this is a, a safe pickup at these prices. Uh, I don't think your downside risk is very high, and it's a complete copy. Yeah, it's rough. But you get to say you have an Amazing Spider-Man 1 universal complete copy. All the story, everything. I mean, we can check the grader's notes real quick just to take a look. And, man, this that thing bugs me that CGC added. It's really obnoxious. Uh, so, grader's notes, heavy creasing to cover, multiple piece out cover, multiple stain, multiple tape. So, yeah, nothing is missing on that book. And if we take a look at the census, there are a lot of them. I mean, 3,459. But there are a lot of people that want Amazing Spider-Man, number one. So it was the first big Silver Age key I ever bought was that 0.5 of Amazing Spider-Man number one. And I bought it on Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, so, all right. Now let's move to the final Spider-Man key we're going to talk about. And this was the biggest sale of the entire auction this week. It was this copy. I actually made a short about it where I was asking people, would you rather have a high-grade restored copy or a lower-grade universal because at 33,600 right now, you'll probably get around a 3.5. I think about a 3.5 universal is about what you can get. And you can get a pretty decent looking book at a 3.5. So you could have a pretty good looking copy or you could have this, you know, this 9.0 that is obviously a beautiful looking copy, but it is a restored book. You know, somebody's done a lot of work to it or a fair amount of work. It's an A2, but it's color touch, pieces added to cover, tear seals, cover cleaned and reinforced. And so I've had some people ask that question before, you know, cover cleaned, because when you get a book graded, you often get the book cleaned and pressed first. This is talking about chemically cleaning the cover. And so they have ways of detecting that if, you know, it was chemically cleaned. And so if it is, then you, you get this purple label. And then you generally, unless there's some methods that I don't know about, because I'm not an expert on that. Uh, once you have cover cleaned, you can't get back to a, a blue label. And so all these other things could, in theory, be undone. Uh, you know, the color touch pieces added, tear seals, reinforced, can all be undone. You get back to a blue label. But cover cleaned, you can't, um, at least that I'm aware of. Now, if we go and take a look at the, the notes for this one, remember, there was quite a bit that was done to this book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at these graders notes. This is everything that was identified for the restoration on this book. And A means professional, two means a small to moderate amount. But I mean, color touch, color touch, color touch, cleaned, cleaned, piece fill, uh, reinforced, you know, wheat paste, tear seals with wheat paste. I mean, there was there was a lot done to this book. And so even though it says two, you know, A2, 
there was still a lot of work that was done to this book. I imagine it's a lot of little things along the spine. And if it hadn't been done, maybe it's a completely split spine. I don't know. You know, it might, if you, if you had, were able to get back, it might go all the way back to like a one five or something with that amount of work that was done to it or a one Oh. So yeah, I, I mean, this was, in my opinion, this was a pretty strong sale. Uh, it's tough to say with restored. I had estimated this book would go for 30,000 since I had thought about it previously with that short that I did. So I'd estimated this book would go for 30,000, but let's take a look at Amazing Fantasy 15 because it definitely is a book that had gone crazy during the comic boom. It's one of the ones I talked about a lot. And I got a fair amount of flack for it too because I was telling people to be cautious with it because it was spiking like crazy and people were telling me Spider-Man never goes down and uh, <laughs> they were they were not correct. Um, but let's uh, let's take a look at these restored books and we'll take a look at a 9-0. And so there's all kinds of restored because there's you've got amateur, you've got professional, you've got when they didn't used to give the numbers. So you'll have like different types of, of designations for the uh, the restoration. But we had a moderate professional that last year went for 34,800. And I know this book has dropped since then. Now this was an A2, which is, is less than moderate. Like moderate professional would probably be A3. This was an A2, so it's less. And so I was expecting it to go for Less than this one because of the correction, but it's a less serious type of restoration. So that's what I was thinking, 30. Went for 33,600. So, you know, a little over 10% above what I would estimate the book would go for. So a pretty solid sale. Um, it's just one of those books that's always going to go for a lot of money. I mean, whether you like restoration or not, like people are going to be there to bid on it because it's still Amazing Fantasy 15. It's still that first appearance of Spider-Man. But if you look at like a 9 Unrestored, and the last time you had a 9 Unrestored was eight years ago, and it went for $395,000. I mean, eight years ago, and this still went for a tenth of that book. If this book sold today in a, in a 9 it would probably be like, it's tough to say, maybe five, 600,000, something like that. Uh, and so this would, this is going for maybe 20 times less. And so that's one of those things with restoration you got to remember is that as you get to higher and higher grades, the percentage of value of the restored book goes lower and lower. Because if you have a, a 1.0 restored copy versus a 1.0 blue label, they tend to sell for very similar prices. But if you have a 9.0 <laughs> restored copy versus a 9.0 universal, you get a big price difference. And so it's just the way it is. Part of it is, could you get back to that blue label? If you remove the restoration on the lower grade one, it's probably going to still get around the same grade. That kind of stuff is, is what matters here. Um, but I felt like it was a pretty solid sale. Let me know what you think in the comments about this one. I mean, let's take a close look at this book. I know I saw in the comments from the short, most people said they would rather have the universal. Most people said they would rather have a universal copy of this book than the, the high grade restored one. I mean, it's got, you know, like, little wear in the corner there but overall i mean it's a great looking book it looks like a lot of the work was done on the spine and the thing with professional is you're not really supposed to be able to see it and you really can't i mean it, it looks good i mean it's a good looking book it's it's good looking restoration it's just for personal preference a lot of people would rather have the universal now my take on the restored versus unrestored is generally golden age i'm okay with restored books because you have a lot less of them. The values can be so high for unrestored copies that it's just, it's a way for you to be able to get a copy. But in the silver age, the bronze age, that kind of thing, the, the book is so prevalent that there is less need to try to get a restored copy. And so like, for example, even amazing fantasy 15, there is 2,542 universals. I mean, it's not like there's a shortage of this book. There are usually copies out there that are for sale. And now getting a high grade, you know, that kind of thing is a different story. But if you just want the book, there are usually copies that are available. And that's why my general opinion is that I don't really have much interest in restored books outside of the golden age, just because I can, I can get a universal copy. Now, Let's take a look. I had mentioned, you know, what would the grade be that you could maybe get in a universal? You can see here, 
3.5 went for 29,900 in February. We had a 4.0 that went for 34,800 close and a 4.5 here that went for 34,800. Now I remember this 4.5. This was, I had said that I felt like this was one of the best buys uh, of that auction. This was an, I think that this was a very safe buy and just a really good pickup because it was a good looking book too. I mean, here's that 4.5 and yeah, I mean, it's got a little bit of chipping, but it's not too bad. It's not like big pieces out in. You know, I know that's something that bothers some people. I don't really care about the chipping. But overall, a pretty solid looking book. It's got most of the wear is on the, the edges. There is a little bit of color fade in Spider-Man. And that could be something that that hurt the sale a little bit. But it's still a 4 or 5 Amazing Fantasy 15. But I can get that. That sometimes like the color fade on, on the reds will, will bother people. And uh, that's why, like, my point five, that was one of the big selling points for me, was that it had really deep reds on, on Spider-Man there. But those are all the books I was going to talk about. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. So, you know, I tried to have a variety here this time. So you had some little more affordable books, some really expensive books. Uh, but everybody, I feel like, likes talking about Spider-Man. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.